Thanks very much, Thiru. Um, I um, have. I'm, I was asked last night at, uh, at the cocktail event um, why are you actually opposed to uh, or worried about the broadcast treaty? Um, we've heard that you're uh, worried about post fixation rights, but what are the tangible things that actually worry you as potential problems? So I thought that in my remarks today I would be very concrete and give some specific examples um, since I thought that was a fair question. Um, and um, <clears throat> if we're going to do that, then we have to um, look at what exactly the treaty would um, endanger. And it's hard to do that when we don't have a treaty before us. Um, this week, of course, there's been discussion over a series of um, tables or charts. Um, so it would be great if I could use that as the basis for my presentation. But um, since this presentation is being recorded and since those charts are supposedly confidential, I, I can't do that. Um, so what I'm going to use instead is the uh, working document for the treaty, um, which was released a couple of sessions ago and is still one of the working documents that we're um, basing the discussions around. Um, uh, SCCR 27 slash 2, I think it is. And um, so I'm going to look at some of the definitions in here. Uh, before I go into the concrete examples of how these um, could impact um, things that are important to us. So, um, in Article 5, there's a definition of broadcasting, um, which currently, there's a, several possibilities for the language, but uh, one of the core concepts is broadcasting for the reception by the public. And um, one of the comments that was made yesterday um, by the, um, my colleague, from the Centre for Internet and Society um, was what kind of public? Um, do we want to talk about a, um, more than just a limited public? Um, uh, in, in many jurisdictions, uh, copyright law is, um, specifically allows um, content to be disseminated within a limited circle um, and not counting that as the public. So what is the definition of the public here? It's, it's a little unclear. In Article um, 9 of the draft treaty, uh, sorry, before I move off of Article 5, it also says that it doesn't include transmission over computer networks, which is an important point that I'll come to later um, in the, within the definition of broadcasting. So Article 9 then talks about the exclusive rights that the treaty would provide broadcasters with, including the exclusive right to authorise fixation of their broadcasts is one possibility. Um, also an exclusive right to authorise retransmission and communication to the public of their broadcasts. Um, Article 10 sets out some possible exceptions, which could include private use, reporting and education. And Article 12 um, sets out legal protections against unauthorised decryption. So that's only a few sections that I've pulled out of the draft treaty, but those are enough to illustrate some practical problems that we could come up against. So on the screen behind me, you can see a TiVo. Um, some of you may know about this device. So it's been around for years, um, but it's been recently updated. So that the TiVo not only allows you to record um, TV broadcasts to watch later, um, but it also allows you to uh, place shift them, to watch them in another place um, over the internet. So there are a couple of things that the treaty could um, impact here. One of them is just simply the fixation of the broadcasts. Um, now, admittedly, there's a likelihood that there'll be some exception for private use, um, but uh, depending on the scope of that, the use of one of these devices um, that's not specifically for a personal use um, may be unauthorised. So what if you're recording a program um, that you want to show to a friend later, would that be um, authorised or would that be an unauthorised fixation? Um, that's a, an unanswered question. Um, it, um, because this is internet connected and it can transmit the broadcast elsewhere for you to watch at a different place as well as a different time, um, you might think that that isn't in danger um, from the broadcast treaty because of the language 
that excludes transmission over computer networks from the definition of broadcasting. But that's actually wrong. Um, that exclusion of transmission over computer networks is only an exclusion from the definition of broadcasting. It is not excluded from communication to the public. Um, so if we have a right of communication to the public that's exclusive to the broadcaster, that um, exclusivity can still be breached by a, a communication over computer networks. Um, so the TiVo could be in breach of the broadcast treaty. Um, <clears throat> there are other devices. This is one that I have in my home. It's called an HD Home Run. Um, it allows you to retransmit your broadcast content throughout your home across a computer network. Um, so again, because transmission over computer networks is not excluded from communication to the public, um, if you have friends over to watch um, uh, something that, you, that you're retransmitting from TV, they could be in breach of the treaty, um, depending on how we define the public. Um, similar to the HD Home Run Box is this thing called a Sling Box. A uh, Sling Box also enables retransmission, um, or communication potentially to the public. Um, it's a similar sort of device for place shifting as the TiVo now also does. Um, so that's in danger for the similar reasons that I already mentioned. Um, now what's this? Probably, unless you've seen it before, you probably have no oh, yeah. idea what that is. Oh, yeah. um, does anyone want to hazard a guess what that is? They just lost the camera. It's, oh. sorry? Antenna. And it is, it's the, that's right, it's little antennas um, provided by the Aereo service. Now, you may have heard of Aereo. Oh, yeah. um, the, up until now, all of the other devices that I've shown have been um, very clearly for personal use. This one is a little bit of a grey area because it's a commercial service that was offered to the public to retransmit TV broadcasts to them over the internet. Um, but each individual antenna here, each little white uh, uh, thing that you can see sticking out of that circuit board, is um, allocated to one specific end consumer. Um, so they have ownership of that little antenna. So Aereo's argument was that this was uh, uh, not going to be a breach of, in that case, copyright law, since there's no actual broadcast law, um, that it was not actually a breach of copyright law. And uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the court came down against them recently this year. So the Aereo service is now um, illegal in the States under copyright law. And we have concerns that exactly the same result might be reached under the Broadcast Treaty, that um, these value-added useful services that are really only designed to allow people to do things that they could legally do themselves, um, uh, but on a... a, a service uh, um, recording as a service uh, basis rather than using a device. Um, that would also become illegal under the Broadcasting Act, uh, Broadcast Treaty rather. Um, okay, moving on we have this software called VLC. VLC is partly just a media player but it can also do some other things that you may not even know about including streaming to a network, um, transcoding content, um, these acts of streaming and transcoding could be illegal under the Broadcast Treaty. Um, VLC can also do some acts of circumvention um, in case, cases where the copyright is protected, uh, sorry, where the content is protected. Um, there are um, modules for conditional access um, that can be purchased to plug into a TV tuner device. Um, these are potentially circumvention devices which could be unauthorised under the Broadcast Treaty. Um, so VLC, although not illegal per se, when it's used in conjunction with one of these conditional access modules, could become illegal under the Treaty. And there's also another piece, oh by the way, VLC I should say is open source software, so um, this is software where you can't really <coughs> licence the use of proprietary um, uh, software modules from the broadcaster because it's open source and they won't trust that, that you'll use the open source software in a way um, that won't facilitate piracy. So this is, um, and another example of that is this software called MythTV. MythTV is also um, free and open source software. So everything that goes into this, if you're watching TV using this software, um, it's impossible to really 
um, have uh, broadcaster authorized um, decryption as part of this um, software. So the only way that you can watch uh, encrypted broadcasts will be to circumvent the encryption. And that, of course, makes this into a legal grey zone as well under the Broadcast Treaty. Um, this is not just a theoretical. Um, in the UK, there's uh, high definition broadcasts that are encrypted, um, even on free to air TV. Um, the only way that you can watch those on Myth TV is to basically downgrade to either an analog capture card or to use the standard definition service. There's no way to use the high definition service unless you're engaged in circumvention, which will be illegal under the Broadcast Treaty. And um, so we've looked at hardware, we've looked at software, and we've also looked at services with Aereo being a service. And here's another service. This one is called Mixmove. Mixmove is a cloud-based video editing software. So you can easily see how, um, if you're drawing on broadcast content to incorporate into this, maybe making a mashup or um, a commentary or something that would be legal under copyright law, it would be fair use under copyright law, um, it could still infringe the broadcast treaty if you're using broadcast content um, using this cloud service. So that really puts a cloud over um, innovation in online services. And that's one thing that we're worried um, is not being properly thought through in this treaty. So uh, those are my very short remarks, just to show that in a lot of these acts um, of fixation, retransmission, communication to the public, um, and circumvention are integral to a lot of innovative products, um, including hardware and software products, and services. Um, and we should not be rushing into this treaty without fully assessing the potential damage that could be done to these innovative services, including free and open source software and hardware um, um, innovations. Thank you very much.